In this tutorial, we'll go through the signal track. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hi everyone, this is Omar Balfaki. If you are a subscriber, welcome back. If not, welcome to this channel where I create game development tutorials and from time to time I upload my short films. If you are interested, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever a new video is uploaded. So before we start, I just want to say thank you, thank you so much to every single one of you guys. We've just crossed the 10,000 milestone, the 10k subscribers milestone. It's not an easy one, at least for me, it took me 10 years just to be here. So thank you guys and you can join our still growing Discord community where we can help each other. I'll try my best to answer your questions and also there are a lot of awesome people there who would do their best to help you as well. So join now, I'll see you there. But as for now, let's just continue with the timeline series. In this tutorial, we will go through the signal track. It's a very helpful track which gives us the ability to communicate between the timeline and our scripts in components. We can call functions, change values, toggle scripts, components, change materials, and a lot of things that we can do with. Let's start and see what we can do with it. So in this simple scene, I'll just hit play and see what we have. Nothing, just two boxes and a sphere. They're just falling. Let's say I would like the sphere to fall a few seconds after the two boxes. How would I do that? Normally, we would create a script that toggles the rigid body in a few seconds. But with signal track, we can do that simply. So here I've got a, an empty timeline and I'm just going to create a signal track. It requires a signal receiver. Before we do anything, I'm just going to lock the timeline so it doesn't go away. If I select the sphere, it has a rigid body. So what I want the signal track to do is to give the sphere a signal to turn on is kinematic so it would stop and then we would disable that so it can fall. First thing first, I'm just going to drag the sphere into the track and it gives us this option to create a signal receiver. So this is the first step. We've got a receiver. Now we need to call a signal. To do that, just right click and then we can add a signal emitter. But there is a warning triangle here. It says no signal assigned. And we don't have any signals in our project. To create a signal, we can either click on create signal here or we can go to project tab, right click, create and then signal. Let's just call this test one. So if I select the signal in the timeline, we can see a drop down now and the signal we just created is here. Let's emit that signal. So what will happen now is when we pass that signal, it will be emitted and the sphere will receive that. But nothing will happen at the moment because we've got the emitter, we got, we've got the signal and we've got the receiver, but there are no reactions. So basically the signal receiver is not expecting that signal. What we will have to do is we need to add a reaction. And then we have the signal here. We can create a new one or we can choose the one we just selected. And as you can see, we've got a list of reactions. So one signal can call or trigger multiple reactions. In our case, we want to enable is kinematic. So I'm going to add a new reaction. As you can see, it has already assigned sphere, which is this sphere. You can also select other objects and assign them here to access their components, but it's fine. In our case, we want to access the rigid body under our own sphere. So what function we want to call? We go to rigid body and then is kinematic. And I'm just going to turn it on. So if I hit play now, you will see that the sphere is not falling. Why? Well, its kinematic is set to on. 
So let's try moving the signal a little forward. Select the sphere. We see it's still off and just hit play. Let's see what happens. Okay, cool. Just after a few frames, it triggers the signal and it sets its kinematic to on. All right. Let's have it set it back to false after a few frames. Here I'm going to add another signal emitter. And I'm just going to create another signal and call it test2. It doesn't have any reactions at the moment. We can modify it from here or we can select the sphere and add a reaction. So to try something different, let's just change it from here. I'm going to add a reaction. This time, rigid body as well is kinematic, but we will leave it toggled off. And let's hit play and see what happens. It stops, waits for a few frames, and then it turns it on. All right, cool. Let's add one more thing. As you can see, there is a simple script attached to it. It has a function, add force, which simply will add force to the rigid body. So it will fly a little. Let's create our third signal. Add signal emitter. Test three. And this time, We'll go to the simple script that we have, signal test message, and then add force. We can move it till here. So if I hit play now, it falls, and then it adds that a little force. All right, cool. Before we move on to the next example, there is another thing you need to know. Using signals can be shared with other objects. So a single signal can be reacted to differently based on each object. So if I select one of the boxes here and just drag it, signal track. As you can see, it doesn't have any reactions. So if I add a signal emitter here and choose test one, so basically I'm reusing it. Here, test one has this reaction, setting is kinematic to true. Whereas here, it doesn't have any reactions. So if I hit play, you will see nothing happens to that box. Why? Well, because we don't have a reaction to it. So let's add a reaction. This time, we will change the material. Let's choose anything else. And let's hit play. You see? Each object reacts differently to each signal. So basically, you can create a list of signals and then you can share them among different objects. Let's take another example. What we have here is a simple cutscene. Very simple cutscene. What we want to do is we want to stop the player from controlling the soldier during the cutscene. So after the cutscene, it's fine. I can control him. But what if during the cutscene, I'm just going to move the animation a little forward and see what I mean. So now I can play around and then the cutscene starts and everything happens and everything plays. So to stop the player from controlling the soldier, I'm going to add a signal track. So I'm going to add our player here, signal track. Let's add a signal here. Put it in the first frame. We can create a new one, but I will just reuse the old ones that we have. So test one would disable the ability to control the player. What would be the reaction? So I'm going to select the player. We want to add a reaction to that test one. I'm going to select test one and the reaction would be disabling the player controller. So I'm going to select player controller, bool enabled. Just leave it as false. If I hit play now, 
we will see the player controller is disabled and it cannot control the player. Even after the timeline finishes, I cannot do anything. So, I'm going to create another signal emitter here at the end. And test 2 at a reaction. This time, we're going to re enable the player controller script. So, let's hit play and see what happens. Nothing happens. We can't control the player. Now I can control the player. But of course, the animation will be pulled back until here. This is how it should be like. So we cannot control the player till the end. Okay, cool. And I already think that you have a lot of ideas in your mind that you want to do with the help of signal tracks. So let me know what sort of implementations you would do and how will this help you. And uh, if you got any questions, just let me know. I would love to answer your questions. And hopefully after we finish the timeline series, we will go through more filmmaking with Unity. And we're going to talk about facial animation and so on. So I'm really excited about the upcoming tutorials. Let me know what you think. If you'd like to see more of these videos, remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever a new video is uploaded. This is Omar Balfaki. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.